Hey, heard you want to be a game developer. Well, stick around. Let's make your first 2D platformer with Godot in just 10 minutes. We'll start it off by creating tile maps. Have a node 2D as your parent node and a sprite as a child node. Under it, a static body 2D with a collision shape as its child. Get yourself a good tile map sprite. In my case, I have two 64 by 64 tiles in one PNG file. It might seem blurry, but don't panic yet. Click on the import tab and re-import your sprite in the 2D pixel preset. Whoa. Cut your tile maps to your desired size using the animation tab. Set your collision shape extents so that it fits perfectly. Duplicate your sprite node. Click these buttons right here and those buttons there. This process is essential to have your tiles move grid by grid. Go back to your animation tab and hit the next frame to gain access to the other half of your tile map. Convert your scene into a tile map. Make sure to have it under the T-Res extension and you're done. Next up, we're going to be setting up a world scene. We're going to want to have a node 2D as the root node, which we'll be naming world, adding in a tile map node as its child. Let's take our T-Res file and put it in our tile map node. Set the cell size that it fits perfectly, and congratulations, you can now draw your own levels. Here comes the fun part. As a child of a world node, we're going to want to add a kinematic body to B and name it Player. Now say Player gave birth to Triplets, Sprite, Collision Shape 2D, and Camera 2D. Whoa, they look like a family now. Import your sprite sheet and put it in the sprite node. Again, it might seem blurry, but I guess you already know what to do if you listened attentively. And I know what you're thinking. Where did I get this sprite sheet? Well, good news is that I made them personally for you to use. This guy is completely free to download in itch.io. Use him on any of your projects as much as you'd like. And by donating a minimum amount of $3, you'd get these two fully animated enemy characters along with him and help me pay my bills. Check out the link in the description. Let's cut the crap and head right back to the topic. This specific sprite sheet has 6 vertical and 8 horizontal frames. Plotting this into our animation window will leave us perfectly with 1 frame per 32 by 32 pixels, making it a lot easy for us to animate our character for later. Let's just leave this as 0 for now. Take your collision shape and set it as a capsule. Set the extents and make sure that it fits perfectly. You might be wondering why I am speaking so low as of this moment. It's only because it's currently 4am and I'm a good neighbor. Set the camera as current and choose the zoom amount of your preference. Enable smoothing and let's get coding. First step is to remove all the crap you don't need. Then, we'll be setting our constant variables. Up simply indicates the upward direction using a vector 2. Gravity should be set to a small amount, while the maximum fall and movement speed should be something of your preference. Before we get any further, we would need to set up our input maps. You can do it with your own preference, but I personally like to map the A and D buttons respective to the left and right movements, while hitting the spacebar would let the character jump. Let's add in a variable for a blank vector 2 to indicate our X and Y motion. Under the physics process function is our first if statement. If we were to press D on our keyboard, our player would move positively on the x-axis. Else, if we were to press A on the keyboard, our player would move negatively on the x-axis. And else, let's say we don't press neither D nor A. Our motion on the x-axis 
would be zero. Now we need gravity to pull our player down constantly. For our Y motion, we're going to add 20 plus 20 for every tick of the delta time, or in layman's term, our game engine's milliseconds. As of this moment, our player's falling speed would be endlessly exhilarating by 20 for every millisecond, which is why we have our maximum fall speed variable. If our motion on the Y axis goes beyond the maximum fall speed, it would remain as the value of our maximum fall speed. And we're just about done. We're going to want to set our motion variable towards an inbuilt function called move and slide for our player to be able to interact with the environment and identify collision. Now we're left with one problem. Our player can't jump. We're going to be adding in a variable for our jump force and another if statement corresponding to our jump button. If the player just pressed the spacebar, then the character would be moving negatively on the Y axis, which means upwards. Next up is we're going to have to make sure that this code can only be called when our player is colliding with the floor. He ain't Flappy Bird. Now with just these lines of code, we are now able to do this. Well, so far so good, but the motion feels janky, and if you're a platformer aficionado like me, and say you want your platformer to feel like Super Meat Boy or Sonic, we're gonna have to add exhilaration. First off, add a variable called acceleration and set it on a very low amount. Change the input signs to plus equals and negative equals acceleration respectively. This would make our character move plus 10 or minus 10 points per delta time. Same concept with gravity earlier, we would need something to cap the speed to a certain amount. And for this, we're going to be using an inbuilt function called clamp. This function will limit our motion.x from negative 80 up until positive 80. And we would also want our character to slow down gradually. We can do this by using an inbuilt function called linear interpolation or lerp. Now I know the name is kind of scary math, but don't freak out yet. It's actually just a gradual value shift from our current value towards zero in a matter of 2% for every tick on the delta time. The changes might be subtle, but this would make the game's movement mechanics feel really smooth and fun to play with. But I know what you're thinking. It still looks like sh**. And that's because we don't have animations yet. We're gonna wanna need an animation player node and have it as a child of our kinematic body. And let's make our first animation. We're gonna wanna start with the idle animation. Click on your sprite node and on your animation panel in the inspector, you may notice that there is a new button, a key. Click on this button and you may notice that there is a keyframe added in our animation tab. Click on it again and a second keyframe would be added. We're gonna want to do this process again until we reach the end of our idle animation. Set the timer to match the end of the animation sequence and enable looping. Do the exact same process on your running animation sequence as well as jumping which is only two frames without looping enabled and lastly falling which consists of four frames and no looping as well well let's get back to coding set a variable called facing right which we're going to be calling true as of this moment now if this variable is true then our sprite would be scaled positively on the x-axis and the exact opposite if it is false and if we were to press D on our keyboard, our character would be facing right. Else, if we were to press A, our character, of course, would not be facing right. We would also need to play their assigned animation depending on whatever the action would be. Lastly, we'll be making another set of if statements to identify whether our player is going up or down and assign the appropriate animations. And of course, these codes should only work whenever our player is in mid-air. 
And the last thing that you need to do is to save your work and hit that subscribe button.